Oh man, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. I got broken end mills. Oh, that's a lot of money right there. That's a lot of carbide. And uh, it's depressing, but at the same time, we're gonna pull something cool out of the ashes, all right? So let me go ahead and grab this broken end mill, and I'm gonna teach you how to do an old school CNC machinist trick to make a removable stop. Boom. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Oh, I'm excited. Tips and tricks. So before I get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and put your comments down below. If there's something you want me to show you guys, teach you guys, then put the comments down and you'll probably see it in a future video. All right, so we got our broken end mill. We got our Ericsson Kenna Metal tool holder right here. It's got a ER32 collet, a half inch diameter. The end mill was a half inch diameter. So we're basically just gonna take this guy, flip it down and go into the collet and we're gonna lock it down. All right, so we have our pin stop, right? Our broken end mill inside the ER32 collet dialed in and we have a piece of material. And the material is an odd shape and it's going into a vise that does not have a stop on this side. So how do we guarantee the position, right? You're actually clamping it in Y axis, right? So that's not a problem because your dead jaws on the back side. And if you have no stop in the X axis, you basically can't ensure that your part is going to be perfect unless you place it and edge find it. But then if you have multiple parts, you'll have to do that each and every time and you might make a mistake. So that's where using a pin stop actually comes into place perfectly. The pin stop drops down. It's mathematically perfect because we know that X zero is this surface. So looking at the part, if I just say, let's program the pin stop to come down at X negative two five zero, it'll drop down. And then you know that the edge of it will be absolutely perfect since X negative 250 is half of the diameter. Now, what if I actually wanted to shave off 50 thousandths? And I know that if I bring this guy down and I actually put it against it perfectly at X negative 250, then it'll be edge to edge, right? But now here's the trick. If I actually want to cut 50 thousandths off it, I just add the 50 to the 0 0.250, which equals 0 0.300. And that makes it so when the material comes over, it actually overshoots it by 50 thousandths. And then when you come and clean it at zero, you would have taken the 50 thousandths of material. Make sense? All right, so let's do a little bit of hand coding. I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. All right, so I'm gonna actually show you how to program this in MDI, manual data input. I'm gonna show you how the code works and then when you actually utilize this technique, you can place it as tool one, you can place it as tool 40, tool 60, you can keep the pin out of place and just call the pin up whenever you want, all right? But for this demonstration, I'm just gonna call it T1 for tool one, okay? So I'm gonna go into manual data input. First thing I like to do is actually do a few end of blocks, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna go M6, T1, and the block enter. Let's go get that tool. Now I'm gonna hit G0, G90, G54, X negative 0.25, Y negative one inch, and the block. So usually I'd have an M3 with a spindle speed, but I'm not gonna put that. And I'm not gonna turn on the coolant because the tool needs to be stationary and the table needs to be dry. So I'm gonna drop down. I'm gonna go grab my height offset, G43, H1, Z.1. Gonna hit end of block, boom. Now, make a little space. I'm gonna go G1, Z, negative one point, feed 100, boom. 
Now I want it to stop because I'm gonna open the doors and I'm gonna actually place my part in there. So I'm simply gonna hit an M0 and tell the machine to stop and hold. Create space and then we're done. So let's get the tool holder out of the way. G0, Z, one point, boom. And then I'm gonna end this program. G0, G90, G49, cancel height offset. Z0, takes it to machine zero, boom. And then let's end the program. M30, boom. So it grabs tool one, puts it in position. Since my X and Y zero is the upper left, I'm actually coming over here and I'm saying X is negative 250. Y is one inch to get it away from the hard jaw. Go and grab my height offset, height offset number one. Bring it down to Z.1. G1, linear move with a feed rate. Z negative one inch. Feed 100 inches per minute. Let's stop, let's wait. Pop the material in, lock it down. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna hit G0, Z.1, get it out of the way and then we're going all the way up, canceling everything to go to home zero and ending the program. If you're actually utilizing this inside a longer program with more tools, you can basically copy from M6 down to G0, Z.1 and actually grab that guy and paste it right before the tool change inside your other program. But for instructional purposes only, I just grabbed the tool, I went back up to machine home, and then I turned the program off. Boom. You know, one thing that I'll say is like, it looks like a very simple process, and it is, right? But you gotta think about it. One time, I actually had 25 foot parts from Boeing. These crazy parts that were, literally, the sides of the doors were open, and the parts were literally across vices, hanging outside that window and this window. 25 feet. All right, so how do you actually put a stop on that? What we did was we put a whole bunch of vices down, we fixtured it, and then we actually started machining the holes and different contours in the part. And then when it came time to machine the rest of the part, we simply shifted, brought down a pin stop into one of the holes that mathematically we knew exactly where it was, and then we just slid the pin hand jobbed it right into that hole, tightened it, took the pin stop out, and placed the part perfectly, right? Because math doesn't lie, so when you actually put it into the program and say, hey, drop down a pin stop at X negative, whatever, X positive, Y negative, whatever, and you drop it into a pre-existing hole, and then tighten something, you can lift up and then run the rest of your program because you know that the part is absolutely perfect. So think about it now. If I'm X negative 250, then I'm edge and X zero to the pin. If I go X negative 300, then the material moves over an additional 50. So if I cut at zero, I cut off 50 thousandths. So basically, whatever your mind can think up, you guys can do, all right? So this is Titan, Titans of CNC. Have a great day. That is my old school CNC machining pin trick. Disappearing stop.